Context of what Kevin was saying from 2005 when he left until 2010, there have been various levels of protest, <coughs> refusing to lock up, um, prisoners refusing uh, various different things. Just to keep the thing highlighted with the prison staff, the prisoners wouldn't be criminalised and, and would be degraded or humiliated. So, I went in 2008 and we then started having negotiations collectively. Given the context of, of the land and search for various different groups and shades of republicanism. So we came together as a collective in early 2010 and all groups participated in a 10 man structure, if you like, that would form a collective overview of all prisoners' views in relation to the conditions that we were living in. So at that time, just to put it in context, every time you went to visit, you drew a short straw, you were going to get a strip search on the way down. Um, if you were, then the same as Kevin was saying, you would lift your feet, take all your clothes off, spread your legs a bit further, lift your tongue, wiggle it, lift the right, all this sort of degrading stuff. Um, they started introducing a drug sniffer dog. They were using it against families. Um, they could talk to the dog that we could sit down and uh, visits were refused. They offered box visits for people. Um, on the landing, if a prisoner wanted to move out of a cell to go to a, the canteen or something, he had to be escorted by three staff, and nobody else in the land was allowed to move. Um, just to put that in context for you, in a recent report there done in uh, Belmarsh, which they say was the highest rate of prisoner over there, the ratio was uh, 12 prisoners for four staff, and we had the case where there had to be three staff for one prisoner. So this kept going on, and things were working on, it was getting worse, you were being locked down at 5 o'clock in the day, you weren't getting out at all. It came to head basically in 2010 where the prisoners decided they in protest action would have to resume. So at Easter, Easter Sunday, 32 of us refused um, to leave the canteen and barricaded ourselves in. And that began a two day sit in the Um The prisoners had identified a multitude of areas which needed addressed, but the two key areas that could end the protest were the ending of strip searches completely and the ending of control movement of prisoners within the confines of Roe House, which is an upstairs, downstairs, a canteen, a small yard, and a classroom. So what the prisoners wanted to see was that in the morning, when it was on lock, they were free to leave their cell, go to another cell, or go to a canteen, or, or go to a kitchen and make a cup of tea. Quite basic stuff within the confines of the most secure part of the prison. And there was never a condition that this involved no prison staff. We always said that the prison staff had to be there. We never an issue that. The issue was for us to be removed. And that the strip surgeon had the end completely. That we believed that we could agree a technology led search which would bring about the need to be degraded in the leader. So again, that started, the protest started, it was then lasted until um, the agreement was signed in August. Um, so, what made this agreement different for us? I mean, that, that cultivated a dirty protest. Um, what happened was it came in heavy handed one day and a guy called Harry Fitzsimmons was taken off the landing in May 2010 and that evening then we started a dirty protest. Everybody on the land. Um, there was no negotiations, no talks, they kept saying the OA is an activity, we not do it. Then at the end of July um, there was a facilitation group introduced from a group outside. Um, that consisted of actually a dairy community worker, um, a major trade unionist person from Belfast, and an international dimension, a guy from uh, Sri Lanka was brought in. And we, the 10 collective prisoners, and I was one of them, um, negotiated basically with them. And so, bilateral talks, we spoke to them, they went away, spoke to the prison admin, and come back. So, towards the end of July, there was various answers were put to us, none of which even went close to um, meeting what we required, which is the end of the control movement and the end of the strip search. The talks collapsed on the 6th of August, um, where there was the where the prison were refusing to move on control movement at all. Well, not at all, they, they were willing to increase the numbers to three out in the landing, but there had to be 15 staff or something. And that they were never going to end strip search. They would try and 
water it down that it wouldn't happen as much. So within that period then from 6th of August to the 11th of August, the crew protests really increased to the extent that there was no movement at all of any prisoner out of your cell. And it got to the stage where it was pretty hurry inside. Um, and on the 11th of August, on the 11th hour, the facilitators came in with a proposal, which was the fourth proposal to us, which dealt with the key areas, which ended control movement with uh, within a period of like well, until April 2011, the proposal to us was that the prison staff would have to acclimatise to the change in circumstances. I.e., that you know if they were going in the next day and open the doors, for example, that the staff would feel under pressure and uh, intimidated. So we agreed a, a three-phase strategy, which would be when the protest ended, if we agreed there and then, that six of us would be allowed out with as many staff as they wanted. We would be out from half eight in the morning until eight o'clock at night, and we had freedom within our own landings. And then in December 2010, phase two was to come in. The numbers were increased to 12 to 15 prisoners. And then in April 2011, we would have a situation where at half eight in the morning, all doors were opened. Prisoners could associate, they could have as many staff over the London, and we were happy enough to accept that. In relation to strip searching, it was in the proposal that went in there, and they would build a search facility, which included, um, and you know, we just want to be careful about this because there's been all sorts of speculation in the paper about actually machines. That, that was never the case. The agreed search procedure that we agreed to was that we would go in and remove our outer coat, a belt, or shoes, and a watch. That would be put through an actually tape machine that you see in the airport where you put your stuff through. And then the prisoners would go on a more rub down search, and we would sit on what's called a posture to detect any metal objects that were hidden. That was what we agreed, that's what they agreed to, and they could use a handheld metal detector. Um, uh, that was agreed with us. We, we said we would do that. We would agree to a uh, human actually. Um, they accepted that. And we then thought, well, on the 11th, it wasn't the base at the end of the agreement. There was a few modifications in the day. They came back to us on the 12th of August with a new agreement. And we signed it on behalf of the prisoners. The prison service signed it. And we signed it because we wanted to prove we were genuine in what we were saying, that the issues were dealt with. And one of the key things that came out of the agreement was it was a form to be set up. What Kevin spoke about earlier where they were meeting publish. We agreed collectively that we would meet them on a, a four-week basis and discuss other areas. For example, um, a prisoner, a public prisoner of a family member dies, you know, a mother, a daughter, a child, anything, that you were allowed out for two or three hours. We were saying it wasn't adequate, that it needed dealt with. So we'd, we'd the, uh, we suppose pinpointed other areas which we thought needed dealt with. So the, the agreement came into effect, the protest ended, um, that was grand for about two weeks.